Hello there, this is exercise 16A.1. It's a fairly gentle look at some statistical diagrams that we need for A-level maths. Uh, and I don't think these are particularly hard, but we need to make sure we understand, I suppose, all the details that perhaps we may not have done otherwise. So I'm going to look at initially a, a nice gentle um, starter, which is all to do with a stem and leaf diagram. And this stem and leaf diagram then, um, is all about the temperatures in 25 European towns and these are the average to summer temperatures and notice the key, the key is always important with semi-leaf diagram so notice 3 slash 5 means 35 sometimes it might mean 3.5 or 135 for instance um, it says here they find the median and the quartiles and the interquartile range from these towns now to a certain extent there's, you can cheat a bit, you can type these into your calculator um, and you might be able to do that, you might want to do it properly I don't mind, um, in the exam you will have your uh, Casio class whiz or something similar so um, just give me the answers please um, I'm going to pause the video so hopefully you've done those, if you haven't then pause the video now yourself and then um, restart it when you've got them so here are my answers based on these then I've got answers 24 now it's actually this one when you do it and there are 26 numbers in total uh, 25 numbers in total sorry if you add one to that which is a, the common trick you get 26 and if you half that you get 13 so it's the 13th number if you count through that's the 13th number and if you then look at the halfway point of these numbers before it um, from memory it's these two and it's 13 and 14 but you can't have two middle numbers so the lower quartile is 13.5 as I said the median is 24 the upper quartile again if you look at the middle of these ones I think it works out to be these two that are in the middle that you get that's the sixth number that's the seventh number after the 24 and therefore it's 35 and 36 and again 35.5 and if you suss the interquartile range it's the one take the other and you get 22. So based on that, hopefully you're okay with the starter. Now, um, I want to look at a couple of things in this video. And one of them is the difference between bar charts, frequency diagrams, and histograms. Because on the face of it, they're all the same. And it's probably easiest to see these differences by doing one of each. So this is my first one. It's a bar chart, the simplest of all. And it's interesting that it says year seven. That's probably when you did bar charts, maybe even earlier. But notice we describe this as categorical data. By that, I, it's, there's a category, a word, a descriptor, which is not a number. Um, it says how many people travel um, by uh, bus or by walking or bike or car. And the bar chart looks like that. You won't be surprised. So very often you get gaps in between each of, of the bars. Notice frequency up the side. That's a common um, theme on all of them. Frequency will go up the side if where possible. Um, so the next now we're going to look at uh, what a frequency diagram looks like. A frequency diagram, notice, I lose my words. It talks now about a, a numerical aspect of the heights of flowers in this case. So it's 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. And we tend to draw frequency diagrams when these, um, these group data go up by the same class width each time. So class width of 10, class width of 10. So when you have the same class width, you very commonly will draw a frequency diagram which will basically just put draw the frequency up the side and you can see here this first one had a frequency of three so I draw a height of three the next one had a frequency of six so you can see a frequency of six is drawn and it's pretty obvious notice no obvious gaps required unless of course there was a gap in the data um, so height across the bottom and frequency up the side again now the third going up by the same amount each time so you'll notice by that I mean this one goes from 0 to 30 that's got a class width of 30 whereas 30 to 40 has got a class width of 10 and in fact all of these are 10 apart from the very last one from memory yeah the very last one is 40 so you might recall that for when you do this the frequency density has a formula and it's frequency divided by class width and so in this first one I would do 240 divided by 8, sorry, 240 divided by 30, which is 8. 320 divided by 10 now is only 32. 500 divided by 10 is 50. And you'll notice you're dividing by different amounts determined by the class width of your interval. Um, once you've done all that, you can then notice when you draw it, you have to draw frequency density up the side. That's a very common mistake that people don't draw frequency density up the side and therefore get it wrong. Um, be aware that we have to do two things here. We have to be able to draw these and also interpret them. 
and the interpret them is the tricky bit i suppose drawing them is the easy bit um, be careful with your class boundaries now shown you this before but just in case i haven't uh, sometimes you get no gaps in the data by that I mean 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 and this is what we expect to happen and therefore not surprisingly we draw our bars at 20 30 40 50 seems obvious but it's not that obvious when you see some other data so here's 20 to 29 30 to 30. now you might get this for instance if you're measuring pieces of wood and each piece of wood is measured to the nearest centimeter so you'd never write down say 29.2 but you may well have a piece of wood which is 29.2 and for that reason when you actually draw the bars for this you need to think about what's the minimum it could be what's the maximum it could be the minimum here would be if it was rounded to the nearest centimeter 19.5 the question will tell you how it's rounded this would be 29.5 and so for this reason here are the class boundaries and they are the ones you'd have to plot on your graph now, and it might seem weird that because you've got a, a graph that goes 10 20 30 40 and you're drawing it to the left of it each time at 19.5 at 29.5 at 39.5 the last one doesn't seem to be a problem in quite the same way but it is so at 20 to 29 oh actually it looks like this 20 to 29 here as well but here it's different because it's age so if someone describes themselves as being 29 years old, they can be 29 and a half. They can be 29 and very nearly 30. In fact, it could be their birthday tomorrow. They'd still say that their age was 29. So for that reason, we consider the someone who says their age is 29 to be anything up to 30. And someone who says their age is 20, we say, well, they are, they are 20. Assuming they're telling the truth, of course. So for this, it seems as if it's the same as the first one. 20, 30, 40, 50. Someone who says they are 30 or up to 39 could be down to 30 or they could be anywhere up to 40 so you, there that's how you draw it so i want you to draw them one of these first of all you're going to have to use our frequency density formula so for instance here what's this 0 to 19 we'll be careful it's 0 to 19 so therefore it's 0 to 20 really um, which has a class width of 20 so here I, I, to work out this i do 15 divided by 20 which is 0.75 so i remember this is the frequency density and you're going to have to do that for all of these and when you've done it i want you to draw me a histogram so drawing the histogram is the easy bit so again pause the video so i'm hoping you have paused the video and done um, the frequency densities and drawn me a graph um, I don't think it's hard it's just a bit painful and if it comes up in the exam you lose marks because of daft reasons it would be a bit annoying um, this again is my table of values which I would want to uh, make sure you calculate it properly and then secondly because we've now got this information we've got the ages and we've got the frequency density um, notice that the ages go 0 to 19 by the way and notice I don't care about 19 I've plotted it at 20 that's something you got your head around and that's again slightly different from uh, GCSE um, but that's what my frequency density looks like uh, I've got it on the side age across the bottom um, and notice there's a proper number scale corresponding 0 to 10 10 to 20 um, that doesn't really bother me see I just go 0 to 10 20 30 40 50 all the way up and that means I've got some bars which are thick and some bars which are thin which is what I want uh, no, still in this demo grams are great but sometimes we're going to try and make them a bit harder by having two way back to back stem in this diagrams and so for instance it says we've got two teams of rugby players and the ones from london um which i'm going to draw over here on the left hand side and red ruth which is down in cornwall somewhere is on the right hand side so the, the let's do the red ruth ones eat first of all these are the easy one 148 now bear in mind by the way when I do this, um, I would try to really put them in order. So I notice when I do the 140, look, 140 is there. That's my smallest one. Then 142. If you've got a few numbers, it's relatively quick and easy to do this. I think I've got them all. Uh, in the 150s, let's cross these out just so I don't. Oh, I'm, I did miss one out. See, there's a 7. And there's a 140. And there's the. One, what did I have? Let's see, a 148. Then the 142. One, two, three, four, five. So there, I have now gone. So in the 150s, I've got one. I've only got two of them, in fact. 153, 154. Ooh, that's them done. 
in the 160s, 161, 160. I've got three, I think. I've got 61 and 6. I'm bound to miss one out, aren't I? 170 and 171, sorry, 176. And then 181, 184, 184. So look, I, that's the easy bit. Um, the harder bit is the bit, the backward bit. So let's do that. One seven six. Um, let's go. Well, let's go back to one forty. How many have I got in the one forty eight range? One forty four, one forty two, and one forty one. So look, one forty one, one forty two, one forty four, and you go backwards. Seems obvious when you see it done, but first time perhaps you wouldn't have guessed it. One in the one fifties, I've got one five six, one five seven. I think that's it. So let's go backwards, six and seven. In the sixties, I've got one six five, one six eight, one six zero. Oh. I think that's it. So uh, five and eight. In the one seventies, I've got definitely got one seven one. A couple of threes. So one seven, and then a four and a six. And lastly, I've got the 80s, which are 180 and 187. And I'm hoping my answers will look roughly like that. So my answers, well, they, they seem to be in the right place. No triple label. Now, one thing I've not done, actually, is added a key. So I, here's my key. I've actually written it in two different ways. And you can do this, or you can. Sometimes I've seen them where they combine them. And they might write 14 stroke, 0 stroke, 1, something like that. And they might then say represents 141 and 140 you know or something like that but no you will need a key if you are expected to draw these yourself